Hello everyone, this is Fallon. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get started with the interview, I just want to give a quick couple notes. Rob and I recorded this interview via Skype, and at the time I didn't have very consistent internet quality, so if we hear some choppiness or jittery things, I do apologize for that. I edited things the best of my ability, so you can get the gist of what he was saying during those few moments where that happens, but uh, we didn't have the foresight to take precautions to do this uh, on a stable connection, uh, since we just don't do this very often, or at all, rather. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, just thanks for sticking through those couple hiccups. Um, and then as far as just editing in general goes, I mostly just edited out any interruptions we had and, like, weird noises, things that would happen. Uh, so what you're getting is just pure interview for the most part. Um, also, at the end of the interview, there will be a song by a band called Callow, which is featured on the Ghost Stories Mix CD. And there will be links provided to the song and to the rest of their music as well. So be sure to check it out and support them. They're wonderful people and musicians. So yeah, and uh, finally, on a rather bizarre note, a uh, technical note, but I thought it was worth mentioning. While I was editing the interview via the program Audacity, I had the playback temporarily set at 1.5 times the normal play speed. And... I just did that to kind of speed up the editing process so I didn't have to parse through all the dialogue in real time and I could just like quickly edit things. So yeah, I did that um, and it made our voices like squeaky and talk really fast and it sounded a bit like Alvin the Chipmunks which is funny but more importantly I actually enjoyed the pacing of the interview at that play rate. Uh, however, I'm, I'm sure most of you would probably get pretty annoyed listening to us with squeaky voices some of you might have liked it but um i just figured we just keep it normal and uh so i exported the audio at the normal playback rate but here's the important part if you're listening to this on youtube or you downloaded it and perhaps have a fancy media player like vlc or i think windows media player does it itunes is not as far as i know yeah so on youtube or you have a fancy media player i recommend playing with the play speed options um so a little public service announcement in some players this includes youtube you can make playback uh speed go faster or slower without changing the pitch of the audio and it honestly keeps your mind moving fast and focused with the talk when you have the audio or the playback speed going faster um at least in my experience and the attention span is a valuable thing, and I just wanted to make sure that you could utilize this tool to preserve that and your time throughout the interview. So, yeah, thanks so much for listening to me blab on about this stuff. I'm sure that you already knew about uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview as much as we did making it. So, without further ado, the interview in 3, 2, 1... Okay, that's about as good as it's going to get. Sweet. Well, whew, let's get started with the Ghost Stories one-year anniversary interview. Woo! Robbie McDonald, it's been a year. How are you? How are you feel? How does it feel to have your work in people's hands for an entire 365 no, six, 366 days. Yeah, it feels, it feels good. I mean, I'm still getting some out. I still have some left over. Really? Yeah. So, I still give some out to random strangers and uh, people I try to impress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was going to ask about the distribution because you made – a bunch for a tour. Did you make more after tour, or did you just have some left over since then? Yeah, I made them all at FedEx. Okay. FedEx office. <laughs> just like stamp them up on an image thing, made a ton of them, and then, you know, those nice FedEx office people helped me put it together. Awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where I've done a lot of flyers myself. Yeah. Um, um, why, why did you combine comics and music? This is such a, 
uh, two different worlds seemingly. How how did you think like when you went when we were like starting the the cowards and Robbie plan? Did you like think oh this is a good opportunity for ghost stories to be distributed or did you have something else in mind? It was really this artist called the Caretaker mm-hmm. who made an, uh, a CD called The Haunted Ballroom, and it was this this really eerie, like, drawn-out, dubby kind of music. And um, and I was listening to that. My girlfriend, uh, Meredith, my girlfriend, found it at a record store, and I was listening to that, and it, it was so haunted and so eerie that I loved making mixes, number one, so I was just like, oh, I've got to make a really haunted mix. And then I was also trying to do some sort of comic. Just started making comics about ghosts and while mixing at the same time. So that's kind of how they, the music and the comics ended up together. Awesome. So like, so yeah, they were they were synonymous with each other. There was never the mix that came with the com it was like they were they were combined one work that's kind of how you see them right yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah that's uh i remember listening to that the, the beginning of that uh caretaker album when we stay with you and how scary it was <laughs> yeah, <it's terrible. laughs> like you're, the way you described it was a lot more poetic than how i would <laughs> scare the crap out of me. <laughs> some facts of his, of course, on the mix, but yeah, I've never gotten through that album. I've never listened to it, really, from the Yeah, it's beginning to end. really, like, I, I want to say it's, like, powerful, but it's just, like, really intense, I think, is a, the best way I can describe it from what I, from what I heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it certainly conjures up a place that you don't really would want to go alone. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah, uh, so you, you were, like, inspired to make the mix and the comics, and they kind of came together, um, but you're historically a mix master, am I correct that's, in saying this? That's right. That's 100% <laughs> correct, yeah. Um, what what got you into making mixes, mix CDs? It was my dad actually. My dad was like a mix fanatic when I was growing up. He would uh, he'd buy hundreds of these sample DJ mixes, um, like Beats or no, it wasn't like a DJ like that. It was more like a like radio DJ mixes. Oh, okay, and they had them for sale at um, in New Jersey at Princeton Rec. So he would buy hundreds and hundreds of these mixes, and I remember just like growing up, and our living room was just filled with them, and he would just like viciously just cycle through all these and, and pull out the gems that he thought were really great. And he made all these. Um, he's probably made a hundred mixes, and he would like take a lot of care to them. He'd uh, print his own labels and put them on the mixes. Wow! And so I kind of grew up with. I guess that was like a really creative thing to do, just watching my dad do it. And of course, that's I, him, you know? So that's kind of where it came from. I just started doing mixes myself when I was like in eighth grade and, you yeah. know, I would like pride myself on like breaking in people, my friends into my indie music or whatever <laughs> I thought was really cool at the time. Yeah. Well, that's like kind of a... Uh a lost art form, um, at least I've, I've felt that way, because I've been familiar with mixes, but I've never really encountered anyone that's put so much effort into crafting, or, like, really been passionate about, like, mix CDs. Usually, if I've ever had friends make me a mix, it's always, um, like, purely, like a way for us to get to know each other and so they just throw on their favorite songs and maybe there was some thought that went into how they all flowed together that sort of thing but it didn't really like the the important thing was that you heard your friend's favorite songs but it sounds like it's a it's a lot more to you than that 
Yeah, well, by the time we had CDs, we we had digital audio, and so it was like you could already flip through and and manipulate audio so much, you know. Mm-hmm. And mix CD really comes out of the mix tape when like tape was, it was like a holy thing to mix, and uh, you know tape was non rewritable if right. I'm correct. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And like people really would was pull the songs off the radio and stuff, put them on yeah. their tapes. It in tape, so yeah, yeah. Now, like you have, like on Facebook, you want to share your music with people, and you're lucky if anyone listens to it. You just you throw yeah. it out there, be like, "This is my jam." I'm, I'm like, you know, something that's like really dominating your life, and you try to share it with people, and they just don't care. Right, or... you're right. That is like the new, yeah, that's like the new medium. <laughs> so it's like. If I gave someone a mix CD, would they listen to it? Like that's that's how I feel when I share music myself. Um, but I feel like you putting a CD out there with um, you know like a really like cohesive work uh, uh, that is ghost stories. Like putting that with there is pretty bold and saying like you need to listen to this. This is a part of the art and this is a part of this is something I think is really important um yeah so quite quite a, a bold visionary move on your part thanks um, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah I'm just gonna this whole time I'm just gonna be talking you up and then giving you a chance to talk yourself up and it's just okay. gonna be a giant ego boost <laughs> okay great great yeah visionary yes yeah. yeah. <laughs> very visionary no but seriously it's uh yeah i i really admire um the the integration of the two forms um and i think perhaps it like it it shines a light on you know arrangements and things like that uh a lot of people might rearrange a song but they're putting in different instruments or that sort of thing or doing it in 3-4 instead of 4-4, four, four. but uh, arranging them with other artist songs on a single, like, you know, like a playlist or that sort of thing, it, it really brings out a new light into these songs, their content and their musical qualities. Um, and so that's all just stuff you learn from your dad, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's really fascinating, man. Um, all right, let's see. So, um, you made a comic. Now, did you did you have what's your history in comics? Was um, it, yeah. I mean, I grew up reading a lot of graphic novels, uh, like notably like Moz, and I grew up reading, you know, like Sonic the Hedgehog, and really loved comics like that, and then. Um, You know, I used to draw a lot of comics, actually, as a kid. Um, Just Sonic the Hedgehog comics. And uh, Mm -hmm. so I had some some experience just drawing comics for fun. But uh, I was was really miserable. I was freshman year at uh, University of Portland. It just didn't seem like it was going in a good route. And I felt really creatively stifled. And I ran into a book called... uh, Metamoz, which is like Moz, if you don't know, is a graphic novel by uh, Art Siegelman. It's a depiction of uh, the Holocaust through like anthropomorphized humans, the humans as mice and and cats. And anyway, I read Metamoz, and it like showed his storyboarding. And oh, I thought like it was, a behind the scenes sort of thing. Exactly. Okay. And I got so inspired by it. I, I was like, oh, great, this looks like so much fun, I want to draw comics. So I started drawing just basic comics, uh, kind of like diary style, mm-hmm. for a while. And then I said, okay, do a project. And that was right around the time I was listening to The Caretaker. And I said, okay, I'll write 25 ghost stories. Wow. And it was just like, um, that discipline in my life, you know, like I wanted an objective number of ghost stories that I would write, and then I would write that and I would finish the project. So. Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like the how the the 
making of the behind the scenes thing, like, um, and that just that just came in at the right time. At the same time, it was just all kind of serendipitous, you might say. And that's, yes. that's why Ghost Stories kind of came around. Yes. I thought it was really interesting um, that you mentioned specifically you're kind of writing comics sort of as a diary um, because Ghost Stories is, right from the start, an open dialogue between the author and the reader. Um, and even like at the end of the comic, spoiler alert, um, you start talking about things you learned through the process of making the comic. Like, um, I, I think that was really an interesting thing that you, so that you were really intentional about that. About the, about what? About not having a fourth wall, just like, you know, you're talking to the reader the whole way through pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty much. Most, most of the time I just didn't, I didn't have any set rules. Like I'm not going to, the fourth wall or I'm not going to break the fourth wall mm-hmm. I just like kind of had a general idea of what the story of the con- and then kind of just let it, it evolve so like sometimes I would just break that wall without even really planning it wow that's interesting so um yeah cause like it seems like each each, each comic kind of has its own voice they're not necessarily connected in terms of like each one having a theme because you know one you'll talk about like ghosts are perhaps energy you're like you're like talking about that idea and then another one is just ghosts of the bones ghosts of the bones so (laughs) so, i mean they don't necessarily have to have connecting context but you do see recurring like images and names and things like that um but it was you didn't have any rule set or anything like that to to govern any structure? No, I re- really just wanted... I wanted the really fixed rule of having um, just the format, you know, just having the form be very, very much... And, and, um, and ghost stories on top. And I try not to break that at all of adventure like i wanted it to feel like the comic was unfolding for me as i was writing it Mm -hmm. and so i just kept there was no rules about the narrative or anything each one could be really different in that sense so like i could make as long as i kept the form generally the same and kept it to each story to a page okay yeah because you kind of see that develop as you're going because like um, you know, the first one is, I guess you, would you, you might call that two panels, maybe three. Um, and then like the next one, it kind of has more of a, it feels like they're more framed in, and then the third one takes up two pages. And then from there, it kind of becomes more structured to that one page format you're talking about. Right, right. And so I, I think that's really like, it's it's rare for me at least to see that that process. You, I mean, you really feel connected to that. I think um, going through that is that um, you said you wanted the stories to unfold for yourself. Is that something that you wanted to share with other people? You wanted to share your creative process unfolding um, to the reader. Yeah, definitely. I mean, hopefully they get that feeling when they're reading it, like. The sensory, or you know, not like it was charted out to begin with, but like this sense of unraveling. Because th- throughout the whole thing, like I don't know what ghosts are at all, you know, and I was just trying to figure out what I thought about ghosts the whole time. So it was just, yeah, that kind of process of discovery. That's really interesting. Yeah, because like you know, some 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 panels are saying like what might be if you just took that isolated frame might be you saying something very definitive about what a ghost is or what they mean. Um, but then another uh, couple stories later, it's going to be flipped on its head. Um, like one example being, so you say like 
ghosts are energy in one, and then one is like saying ghosts are something we discern through our sense generators, and maybe they're just in our imagination, but like, why would we discredit that as unreal? And then, like, I, it seems like you explore a lot of things without trying to consider, the, without having the ideas try to consider one another, just to really explore those ideas in themselves. Um, which I thought was really interesting. Like, because normally, at least my thought process in trying to explain ideas is that each idea has to be self-aware or aware of the other ideas. I, I don't know if that's too abstract, if, I, if I'm going too far out, but like um, you really give each idea its own chance is what I'm trying to say. Right, yeah. Um, and I, I think that's, that was really interesting. So, I'll try and integrate talking about the com the comic as well as the mix um the mix although it, it is a little more ambiguous to talk about um since it doesn't have any concise narrative to it at least for for the reader um but first track on there is just like a wall of fear um at least for me <laughs> uh and I thought that was very well representative of ghosts, the nature of talking about ghosts and introducing the idea of them. Um, you know, it's just like, whoa, ghosts. Let's, it's like they kind of introduce a layer of fear um, in things, at least uh, uh, to my to my experience. Um, and you kind of talk about it um, in one of the... I don't think I have that one nailed down to a specific... Oh, yeah. 18. Uh, so, a comic 18... I don't know if you call them episodes or they're, they're on their own comics or volumes, um, chapters, perhaps. Yeah, I guess chapters. Chapters. Okay, so in chapter 18... Uh, you talk about how there isn't a day I'm not afraid of ghosts. Uh, where are my friends? Why am I am I alone in this way? Uh, <clears throat> maybe, uh, or I've always dreamed of meeting people who have similar experiences, and maybe the people around me do, but it's not something you really talk about. And um, like that, that specifically. Like reminds me so like when you kind combine that with the first track of the ghost stories mix and it's so harsh. Um, like is that is did you introduce like parallels and ghost theme uh, with the mix? Did I try to parallel the mix to the comic? Uh, maybe not necessarily sequentially, but thematically. Yeah, definitely. I definitely. I mean, they're they're both kind of diary esque. I really like doing stuff that that has to do like with my daily life. So like that day that I wrote that comic about like where are my friends? Like I was really depressed that day, mm-hmm. and like and wondering, you know, where is everyone? And I'm having these fringe experiences of how these fringe experiences would go. But yeah, that sense of alienation. And then making the mix was definitely also, like, I wanted to make something representative of my experience as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And they definitely seem to to reflect that. I was just um, curious, so, like, um, some of, the, like, the, I'm going to plug, plug a, a band that we're, we're both very good friends with, Callow, on the mix. They're, they're on there twice. Um, and they they're some of the highlights of that mix. They they kind of they remind me of the themes where it's like the ghosts are in your memories or they are your memories, and 
they kind of also introduce that somber, lonely feeling that you kind of get when you think about ghosts and how they, you know, are communicating with people that can't really perceive them, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah, I definitely became obsessed with the idea that, like, like a ghost is just, like, an aftershock. Like, a ghost is, like, this hollowed-out orange or mm-hmm. something. You know, like, a, a ghost would be, like, if you took an orange and took the, uh, so it was just the skin, like, the ghost would be the center of that orange, kind of like this hollowed-out being. The and so, like, yeah. And if a ghost was just, like, an after like the space then there's so many things that are ghosts in our life yeah which is really when you when you open that idea up it like makes it a lot harder for someone to just dismiss this as speculative or fiction because they have to relate to it in some way yeah and you, and you can even say well people so speaking ghosts of people like people leave a hole in their society and in their social group when they pass on. Mm -hmm. And that kind of absence is felt for a little bit. And then that absence is resolved, you know? Yeah. That's, that's a really, really awesome idea. Like that blows my mind. Um, you know, I kind of get the sense of, um, when I read this, it kind of reminds me of, being a kid and thinking about ghosts. Um, you do touch on that in one of them. Let's see. I don't think I have that one as a note for a specific comic. But, um... Let's, can I control F on a notepad document? <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I do. Sweet. <laughs> you can, uh, fun fact for all the Windows users out there, you can, I don't know about Mac, I'm sure there's a parallel, but you can control F to find things on Notepad. Hey. Just making your life easier. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, right, yeah, so number 24, um, I remember healing ghosts when I was a kid. Except I don't remember nothing. You can't tell me nothing. Uh, isn't it strange to be a kid and remember nothing but birthday parties and ghost stories? Like, I really, really connected with this one. Like, being a kid and thinking about ghosts makes sense to me. Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, they say that kids are the, the closest to ghosts. I mean, they say that kids are, are the closest that kind of their world or have they have they're less uh uh open to things like that you know kids kind of live in this imaginary realm um that's kind of separate from the practical world that we inhabit and so it just seems actually in if if ghosts are real you know that kids would be kind of more in touch with that could you repeat that the internet made it impossible to hear you (laughs) Uh, i was just saying and if ghosts are real, which they are, kids are, would be more in touch with that. Right. Bold uh, statement for for a lot of our listeners out there. Ghosts yeah. are real. Ghosts are real. Uh, we kind of <laughs> talked about how one might perceive ghosts as, um, you know, an impact or a uh, uh, an idea, uh, ideological structure, perhaps. But um, you're saying right here that ghosts are real. Um that's this very powerful statement. Um, uh, and you talk about some encounters with ghosts. Now, I don't want to, you know, like, uh, uh, talk about anything you don't want to talk about. I know this is a, a crazy subject, but um, if you would uh, entertain it, um, you think ghosts are real. Talk about that a little bit. Like your encounters, perhaps? <laughs> your personal experience? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I only had one really major one, which I wrote one dedicated one comic to. Yeah. But I remember my... my 
living in Florida. We were in this old house, and um, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I could, like, it's almost like the air was different. It was, like, palpable. It was, like, kind of moist or something, and it spooked me out, and I sat upright in my... And I saw a ghost, which looked like just staring right at me, just this, like, kind of translucent ear, um, didn't really have any feet necessarily, but, like, had these eyes of just, like, m- like, like murderous rage or something crazy. Body snapped back in, um, in shock, and I couldn't move for about five minutes and my eyes were wide open the whole time. And then I rolled out of bed and, um, and crawled into my sister's room and slept on her floor and then woke up the next morning and told my family I saw a ghost and they said, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> that was like, classic that was, parents. I mean, I don't, I don't know what ghosts are. Like, I don't know if they're just figments of imagination, but I know that like, yeah, I don't know what they are. I just believe in them. That's really interesting. So, like, even after... Um, I was going to ask, um, since writing the comic, if you had come up with any new theories or under, uh, any revelations or more understanding about ghosts. Um, yeah, the comic actually made it more confusing. It made it more made me feel like I knew ghosts less and less by the time I got through with it, honestly. Because it was just like, wow, ghosts are these really mysterious things we can use to describe different processes, and their ghosts are aftershock, and ghosts are people, and, and all, all these things. And it just felt like, wow, I don't know if you can really, ghosts are something you can pin down and say, this is what a ghost is. You know, they're almost yeah. necessarily kind of more fluid. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> quite uh, the unexpected, like... Um, but it may, it makes sense that you would be more confused about it. It's just like, um, so like, as you deliberate and think more, you feel like you're more detached from the ideas of them, or do you think with your more having more ideas with them just just makes it more mysterious, makes makes their reality more affirming. <laughs> And yeah, it makes me more reverent of like just respect for things that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm one of those people who kind of likes to think like that there's much more we don't understand. Fringe experience. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it. That's something I don't, I can't understand one way or another and yeah. just have respect for how much I don't know. Yeah, that's really, that's really like. And in, it's a crazy revelation. Like, um, do you feel that that's um, akin to like when people talk about? So, like, you know, you you need to have respect for things you don't understand or know. So, like, when people talk about having other crazy experiences, whether they're like uh religious experiences or if they're if they ha- encountered aliens or saw a mermaid like these are these are all things that like I've talked to people about so I'm not just throwing out random examples um but uh is that are, are those akin or parallel to that that reverence or do you think it's it's more specifically about the idea of disgusting ghost stories uh, no, yeah, no, it's I definitely all those things, mermaids, fairies, <laughs> aliens, I'm open to any of them being real. You know, I have my own experience, pretty much what I have to go off of. Yeah. Which, you know, it doesn't include many of those things, but... Right, of course. I, I just forfeit that I don't really know a lot about the universe, and, uh... I mean, some of that stuff, like aliens, it just seems so likely, considering the vastness of the universe, mm-hmm. that they would exist. But, yeah, I don't know. I, it's funny, I actually just finished a documentary this morning about aliens. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a really good one on Netflix about, like, the disclosure. I'll plug it here. It's called Sirius. 
Sirius. on Netflix streaming right now. Sirius, S I R I U S. Okay, like the the moon. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I'll, to be honest, I just I feel like a lot of that stuff can serve as a distraction for people because it's really exciting, mm-hmm. and I think that's great. But I think like you have to realize like nothing can take away from your ordinary practical life. Right. Like you still have to go and do your basic stuff, and like it's still I'm more like I'm more interested in in kindness, you know what I mean? Than like absolutely. Then like are are mermaids real? I just think yeah, they probably are. I don't know. Yeah, no. yeah. And I I think that's like the point of go- the 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 whole ideas behind all the things in ghost stories. You know, they're not meant to like scare people into thinking that your experiences are real with ghosts or that they're all necessarily like, you know, they're, they're just, they're ex- explorations of your perception on life really. And ghosts just happen to be part of those perceptions. Right. If I'm right. Gonna, yeah. Um, I think that's, that's really a, like a wise discernment. Um, appreciate that insight. Um, and it could have I mean, the conversation could have gotten really weird really fast, but it actually really benefited from that. <laughs> um, yeah. The, that's yeah. The kid thing still blows my mind because like reading that. So on top of like I just I identify thinking about ghosts more with kids. Like my first two memories in my life that I can think of chronologically were nightmares, um, and. Not necessarily that ghosts instill fear, but like that is a commonly commonly shared trait when talking about spirits or ghosts or whatever. I mean, you have you have the one comic where um, he tells a story about a guy in Phoenix, Arizona, who rides the unicycle into the cave, um, and the ghosts are speaking empty threats and things like that. Um, I'm curious as to, you have so many, like, almost endearing ideas about ghosts in this, but at the same time, you talk about how scary they are. Um, what, what's the connection here between meaningfulness and importance and their fearfulness? Well, I'm not, I, I don't know exactly what my intentions were. But I know that it's sometimes it's really like a just a bad idea to, to paint a scary face on something, even if it is scary. Yeah. Like I'm I'm I'd rather hang out with the monsters and Monsters Inc. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> than like than like real monsters. And so I think it's just like part of part of saying, look, there's nothing really to be afraid of here. Yeah, you don't uh, talk about any sort of, like, violent, uh, ne- necessarily violent uh, stories about ghosts in here um, that I can recall at the moment. But you do talk about, like, how it, it like, things are, your experience with, uh, with the ghost Jake in uh, Chapter 13... And like how that was, like the, you, you decided never to play with the Ouija board again or anything like that. Right. And then hearing about how they're dangerous, but you never really go into more of the dangerous side of things. You know, you kind of you go back into just talking about more perceptions on ghosts, and then like uh, the next chapter specifically is like, uh, so you kind of all right. Let me recollect my thoughts. So, um, you talk about how they're dangerous. Um, you feel like you were playing with fire, you, you say in one of the things, and how they're, the boards are like a door between worlds, and once you open that door, well, ready or not, here it comes. And then the next chapter talks about partly here, partly there, that's where ghosts abide, and no one knows their true form. Kind of like, you're, you're, Easing it out from like 
this is something that probably a lot of people have their own stories to talk about. And um, it's in, in my world, it's pretty widely considered that Ouija boards are kind of scary, not not something you should mess with. And then, yeah, you just kind of t- you tone that down, and then you bring it into Ghosts of the Bones after the next chapter. Yeah. I guess I, w- I wanted to engage... I wanted people to en- engage in, like, re-questioning or re-evaluating what they really believe, and, like, if ghosts are real. Yeah. I think definitely... Um, I definitely think... I mean, it was kind of like... It was more of like a fun... Ghost stories is more of like a fun thing for me. I mean, maybe I should have put like a disclaimer, like, surgeon's general warning, do not mess with ghosts, actually. Like, there's no reason... No reason to engage with ghosts. There's no reason to do that. Ghosts aren't... They're not of this world, and, and they're they're trouble, like you're saying, um, yeah. or you're alluding to, that they definitely can be. And, uh, yeah, no, I never really... I don't know why, now that I think about it, I didn't make more of a point, but I guess, you know, I guess my opinions have changed. Like, I think that stuff is more and more dangerous now. Like you don't actually know, you never know what's on the other side of stuff like that. And, uh, you know, a Ouija board, especially like there's (laughs) nothing, nothing, nothing good really comes through a Ouija board. Right. My experience. And, uh, and you don't even know if it's ghosts. I mean, a ghost or demons. Or, yeah. Or, or so, I definitely would. If a disclaimer now, if you read ghost stories and thought ghosts were all cute and cuddly like I drew them, you know, they're obviously <laughs> they're not. Let's see. So we just got done talking about the disclaimer uh, about ghosts and such things. I actually thought it was really cool that you had um, drawn a huge variety of different creatures and like just different, different imageries that kind of give you the, like, you know, ghost of the sheet or really uncanny face or Rurone Kenshin. (laughs) 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 Um, Or that guy in the fear, uh, the man who appeared in the window and he shows up a lot. Uh, but yeah, the the variety of different portrayals that you have for ghosts uh, is a really nice touch and kind of like everyone's different experiences and that sort of thing or maybe perhaps in how they're hard to define that sort of thing. So uh, having like had the the work exist in the world for this long, um, is there kind of any sort of way that you want readers to experience it? Like, do you want them to listen to the mix at the same time as they read it? Do you want them to, like, only read five chapters at a time and then, like, take a break? Or, like, have you thought of any any weird experiential things that you wish you would have given more instruction for? Or... You know, I really, I really just wish I put a disclaimer at the end, but I wasn't, I didn't have the same perspective that I do now. Like now I think that, um, it's potentially more damaging to deal with those kinds of worlds. From, from my experience, I didn't, I felt like it was a positive thing overall. Yeah. Um, like if anything, it helped me, it didn't make me want to go like, you know, tempts the the realms of the unknown or anything like that. <laughs> it, it, it more so made me want to like Cuddle just try books. to <laughs> no, not that either. <laughs> but more just like uh, just be more aware of the world and it, it just have a better perception. Other than like you know, the unknown is something that we should be afraid of at worst, and not talk about it best. Like, but I think talking about it allows some room... I mean, like, yes, there's danger in that, um, as you're saying, but there's also, like, 
you have a lot of ideas there that I think can be quite beneficial to um, just like how you interact with the world, I guess. You know, you say that you have more reverence as a result. And I, I feel I feel like that is something that you can, a lot of people can take from that. I, I feel like I that's something I took as well on my end. Yeah. Well, good. I mean, yeah, I feel like I just want people to have want them to fun with it. You know, you kind of have to talk about it. I don't think you can. I mean, at some point, you have to talk about these fringe experiences that dismissing them as crazy kind of is closing the door on a mystery. Yeah, you just want to leave that door open yourself, not know everything. Yeah, like two extremes, and it's it seems like you have here presented uh, a like. More, more of a <clears throat> a middle ground. I, th- I think the sto- at least the story um, is more of a middle ground. Um, do you? So you're you're if you could reprint or change everyone's existing copy of Ghost Stories, the only thing you'd really do you think is a disclaimer? Yeah, definitely. But I also want people to decide what ghosts are for themselves. Because, like I yeah. said, I don't. I have no idea. Totally. I have no idea. And um, and I think everyone has an opinion. You know, whether that they think they're completely nonsense, or they think they're real, or they think that they're somewhere in between. Who knows? But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it helped me. I never really had an opinion. I just like. I, I, I've always just kind of been, well, it's just not something I would ever think about. Right. Yeah. And now I did. But it didn't, <laughs> at least in my experience, it didn't, like, open any scary doors, uh, which I'm thankful for. <laughs> uh, if anyone else is having any problems with ghosts, uh, please submit your <laughs> concerns to, um, I, I didn't get your P.O. box, but... uh. Yeah, he's mailing the Northwest Irving Street. Boom, right there. <laughs> Portland, Oregon, apartment number eleven. <laughs> and then you can make Rob feel bad for doing yeah. something that was really good for <laughs> a, a, a cathartic I like creative person. I like that you think it's a good thing, so I'll say yeah, it's a positive. Well, positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, it's. Like like all vulnerable work, you're 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 open to some controversy and uh, potential short sightedness, but all in the name of just doing doing the right thing as best you can. Yeah, sweet. Let's see. So we we talked a good amount about uh, the content in uh, ghost stories. Uh, I don't think there are any lingering topics that I forgot to cover or anything. Um, so we'll kind of take a look at the future of uh, Rob McDonald in his comic book writing career. What 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 do you have in mind? Um, so I was I was. Specifically curious, um, what's the future of ghost stories, if there is a future? Uh, you, it sounds like you're fresh out of copies, is that correct? I think I have one stored away safe. <laughs> but, uh, uh, sure, I mean, I was flattered when you posted it up on Facebook and asked for questions, and Taylor Crone said that he was looking forward to the next one. Yeah. That was really uh, cool. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, and I um, I mean, I'm totally open to doing another one. I'd love to do another Would you be interested in doing, like, another, like, a reprint of Volume 1? Yeah, I could reprint it. Mm. I have the files all on my computer. And I was thinking about you know, like uploading it to the web. Oh, to do, like, a web web style. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. That'd make it super accessible in its uh, second 
living year on this on this earth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, volume two. So is that like something you've thought about or is it just kind of like you would do it if the inspiration came to you? What does that look like to you? Well, I'm probably going to do it. I mean, oh, wow. probably just because of this interview, actually. Cause it was <laughs> just like, wow, I really miss drawing comics. And that was awesome. really, got my comic book. I left it in New York. I went for my grandfather's funeral and I left my comic book there. So I'm, my, my mom is sending me out my comp, so mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it's a reality that there'll be a ghost comic style stories too in the future. You hear that? Confirmed from the author, people. <laughs> ghost Stories Volume 2, probably gonna happen. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm I'm very excited. And I I mean there were. This is assuming like the mix will come into play. How? Um, I imagine that you would also be able to incorporate the mix into the web comic as well. Yeah, I don't know. I'll upload like a little music player. Yeah, kind of takes me back to MySpace. Like if you could make a page for it or something, that'd be sweet. I, yeah. Page. That's a good idea. Yeah. I wonder if MySpace supports this sort of thing these days. Music on your on your page. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So, uh, have you uh, taken any thought to maybe expanding the distribution of ghost stories? Maybe like taking the presentation to uh, your local comic scene, or perhaps. Uh, expos or conventions and things like that. Yeah, I haven't thought about it really. I mean, I'm living in Portland, Oregon, which is like kind of, there's a lot of comic culture here. Right. And so maybe I will get involved in that in the future, but Mm -hmm. as of yet, I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend it from personal experience. uh, Doing that expo with the video game thing was super awesome. You just get connected with a bunch of people, um, like consumers and creators alike like even if you just went there and you had a couple copies and you weren't like you didn't have a booth or anything or if you did have a booth I think it would be a super valuable experience just meeting the people that are involved in that sort of thing it's really cool um, yeah watch out Portland cons yeah um yeah, and uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for uh, Volume 2 of Ghost Stories, is there anything else creative-wise that we're keeping watch for in terms of Robbie McDonald? No, I'm kind of with school. Just haven't been making much. I tried to go back to record some more, mm-hmm. but then remembered how frustrating recording is for me. <laughs> yeah. And so, no, not really. Well, it will it will take a great deal of patience for us to, to do so because we cherish your work so much. <sighs> nice, Valen. <Fallon. laughs> it's just the truth, man. Um, all right, and I'm trying to think. Let's see. So, if you could recommend only one... Uh, chapter or episode of ghost stories to someone if you're just like hey I I understand that you have no time in your life you don't have you know 20 minutes to read this comic so here just read this one which one would you suggest to people yeah. you uh, know I forget what <laughs> number it was okay but the ghost story ghost of the bones that's number 15 people ghost of the bones I just have that in my notes. <laughs> Proud of that one because I just like how it. I like like how it's musical, but yet it's comic. Yeah, like you kind of you kind of create like how you would think it would sound when you're reading it. Yeah, I think that was one of the first ones I read myself. Like just flipping through it. 
I don't, I don't honestly know how it happened, but that's a that's that's an awesome suggestion. So people, when you read ghost stories on the web version, and you think I ain't got time for that, read Ghost of the Bones. It'll change your mind. Yeah. Uh, and you'll want to read the whole thing because it's really awesome. If you haven't read it already and don't already know this, um, yeah. Rob, is there anything, any any parting words that you have uh, for our listeners here today, fans and newcomers alike? Um, ghosts are real, and I'm real too. Thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, thanks to anyone who read ghost stories and enjoyed writing it. Great time distributing it. So happy to be. And my interview. So big shout out thanks to Fallon Brady. And uh yeah. That's it. Awesome. <sighs> thanks so much, Rob. I wonder awesome. I think that'll wrap it up.